everyone, it's James from the Fit RV. It's kind of a, I don't know if you can hear that, it's kind of a rainy day today, but that's okay because I'd like to talk to you about dinosaurs. In particular, I want to talk about absorption refrigeration in RVs, like, like this guy here. So I finally had one too many frozen salads and lukewarm glasses of milk, so I've decided to do something about this. It's going to be kind of a big project. I'm going to be tackling it in sections, and we're going to get the first one today. But before I get into that, I want to tell you exactly what I think about absorption refrigeration in RVs. Yeah, get ready. You will hear the giant sucking sound. Well, first, I'm not necessarily always the greenest guy, but I can certainly appreciate the difference in powering my refrigerator with propane, which is a non-renewable fossil fuel that costs money and produces CO2, versus powering it with sunlight, which last time I checked was free. Uh, second thing, we like to go off the beaten path. We, I, I'm kind of a fanatic about getting things level, but I can't always get them as level as I would like, and I'd like to not worry that my refrigerator is either going to not work or blow up. Uh, number three, fire! Yes, fire! Intentionally set in your RV and left unattended. Hello? Number four, big dopey holes in your RV. And then fifth and onwards, there's a whole bunch of other ridiculousness about running them. Like, well, first there's this. And then there's a whole bunch of other asininity, if you even bother to read the manual, which most people don't. It'll say things like, don't wash your RV near the vents. Really? Don't, don't wash it? And oh, if you're going to use propane, you need to disassemble and clean the burner and reassemble it every three months. It really says that. I read the manual. And it'll say that if you're going to use it in cold temperatures, you need to install the winter covers on your vents. Now, these winter covers only exist in mythology. So good luck with that, because you're going to have to make your own. So, for that and a whole bunch of other reasons, it's my goal to eliminate our absorption refrigeration from RVs. If I were running for office, I'd set a date there, but I'm not. But we're going to start with our own RV Lance here. So, there you go. Now, this is what I'm going to be replacing it with. This is a Novacool RFU 7300. It's got 5.1 cubic feet in the fridge and 1.7 in the freezer. And I think that's big enough to keep me in good with stuff. This is a compressor driven model, so it runs strictly on low voltage DC power. In fact, it's got two compressors in this one, one for the fridge, one for the freezer. So you can adjust them independently or turn one of the other ones off. Now having two compressors, it will use a bit more electricity than a one compressor fridge, but Lance can handle it. Plus installing an electric fridge means I can turn off that propane solenoid and that's gonna save me 24 amp hours a day right there. Now this is actually the same width as our current fridge. It only requires a 16 and 3 quarter inch cutout, but it is a bit taller, which means that I'm going to have to more or less redo that entire cabinet where the refrigerator is. I'm kind of excited about that. So let's go outside and I'll show you what I'm going to do there. All right, well, it turns out there's not enough room to film it. So you're just going to have to settle for some pictures. Starting here on the bottom, the new fridge is going to go all the way down to the ground. So this vent for the Truma is going to have to move and I'm going to move it over to the right hand side there. That uh, subwoofer is going to have to go and I'll, I've got plans for that because my battery here, my lithium battery is currently standing on end. So I want to set that battery down like a normal battery and that should give us some more room in the compartment that it sits in. Now up top, the fridge is a bit taller, so this is going to move up and then the microwave is going to move up and to the left a bit. And before you ask, I can't fit a convection microwave in there, so don't bother. Um, anyway, so the micro is going to move up into the left and the rest is going to be storage. So now, if it ever quits raining, I'm going to get out there and start tearing stuff out of the RV. So hopefully that'll happen today. So I've concluded two things. First, it's not going to quit raining today, so I'm not going to get to this. And second, Steph is no longer in charge of buying our umbrellas. So stay tuned for part two when I actually get around to tearing out that absorption fridge and the cabinetry. See you next time. Bye.